Show of hands, how many people feel okay with this so far? Are you getting the hang of the substitution? Hopefully after the practice last night, then you, you have at least a great idea of what's going on. The last one we're going to talk about is this one. I'll give you one more trig one because I know you guys love it so much, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Woo, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> That's a good one. Why is that a good one? Because right now you're looking at it and you're stumped. Right? Because I would be if I was in your seat. I wouldn't know what to do. We could try some things. You could try picking x. Well, that's not really going to help, right? Just changes cosine cubed of x to cosine cubed of u to u. That doesn't really do much. We could try basically picking cosine x, right? Because that's cosine x to the third power, true? Yeah. But the derivative of cosine x is? Yeah. Sine x. Is there sine x up there? Then that would be a problem. What if you come around this, this situation? You know that the derivative of cosine is basically sine negative, but basically sine if you ignore the constant, and the derivative of sine is cosine, right? You're going to have to have both those things up there. So when we have a cosine cubed and there's no sine, that's going to be really hard to deal with if we don't have a sine, because as soon as you pick some u with a, that has a trig, you're going to have a derivative that has some trig in it, right? It's got to be up there somewhere. Here's maybe a way to deal with this. Break off something that you know has an identity to it. For instance, cosine cubed, I don't know any identity with that. But I do know an identity with cosine squared. squared. Maybe break up a cosine squared. See what happens. Is it in the cosine squared going to give you a sine squared in there somewhere? Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, that was relatively painless. Cosine squared times cosine is still cosine cubed, so that works. Now, I still can't pick that as a u because the derivative of cosine is not cosine. So i got to change this into a sine somehow, and then we'll take our, our u. How much is cosine squared? Cosine, there's no identity with that, right? But cosine squared has an identity. What is cosine squared? Very good. You use the Pythagorean theorem, uh, the Pythagorean identity for um, sine and cosine, I mean. And what this says is that instead of cosine squared, sure, why don't you make it 1 minus sine squared? X. Which is true because if sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1, subtract one or the other and you have uh, the alternate trig function that you're looking for. Do you feel okay so far? Now let's think about this. Think about it. What should your u be? What should your u be? Are you saying, wait, wait, I'll give you options. Your only op there's four options. One of two of them are not good options. Option number one is to five options, I guess. Well, you can really screw this thing up. Um, <laughs> option number one is picking x for u. No. Not going to do anything. Option number two is picking cosine x for u. This is going to hurt you with that, right? Because you can't directly just cross out the sine. You can't do that. And you still have a sine x there. You still have a sine x. That would be a problem. Do you see the problem? That option. Option number three, picking the whole entire thing here. Picking the whole entire thing. You pick the whole entire thing, you've got to take the derivative of the whole entire thing, and it has to show up. The derivative of the whole entire thing is a general power rule. See a general power rule there? 2 sine x cosine x. Does that appear? No. Bad option. Option number four, picking just this part, sine squared x. Is that a good option? Again, you have to take the derivative of that. That's 2 sine x cosine x. That's not up here. Again, you pick the inside thing. Remember that this is sine x squared, right? You with me? This is this. The, 
the U's are inside of something. You rarely, rarely take a U that has a function and a power. That's too much. Because when you take the derivative, it's a chain rule. If you're having to take a chain rule for your derivative of U, you might have picked the wrong U. Do you see what I'm talking about? Because you're going to get that function back again, and it has to appear exactly in your integral. That's oftentimes not going to happen. So this whole thing, no, no, because that's a chain rule, or general power rule, however you want to say it. This thing, ah, that's the inside, is the derivative of sine x in your integral. Then that's the correct u. What is the derivative of sine x? Is it positive or negative cosine? Positive. positive. I still have some people giving me negatives. Be careful in what you're doing, integrals versus derivatives. This is a derivative. Derivative of sine x is positive cosine x. Yes. <coughs> when you divide by cosine, you get du over cosine x equals dx. Hey, we're, we're almost good to go. Let's check this thing out. We've got an integral of 1 my, what's the sine x going to become for us, folks? Square. Did we sell the square? Mm -hmm. Yes. So you didn't even have to deal with the square, right? U squared is easy. <coughs> you didn't have to pick the whole thing because you can take an integral of u squared. That's great. Do I still have a cosine x right here? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no. At this point, yes. At this point, absolutely I do. Do I still have a dx? Mm -hmm. It is instead our substitution is du over cosine x. Does something nice happen? Nice. Awesome. Now, I do know it's easier when I do it than when you do it at home, right? You probably spend 20 minutes on that problem, which is okay, but you're going to start learning some of these things as you go on. I, I think I gave you some hints at the beginning of the problem. When you have trig functions, the derivative has to be there, so break up some things. See if you can make it. See if you can work with it. This one's turned out to be so nice. 1 minus u squared du. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Can okay, you take the integral of 1 minus u squared du? Fits perfectly in our integration table. What's the integral of 1? Tell me that. X? U. No, not x. U. 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 U? Yes. Why u and not x? Because u. Get your variable, you're integrating with respect to. That's why the d whatever is important. U. Minus what? Two. Not two. No. Don't get confused. I know it's confusing. You're going between derivatives and integrals, and we're doing them in the same problem, right? Derivative of sine, and then you're going to take integral of. So oh man, be careful. Don't rush. Just think through it. So far, okay. We're done for ten years. We'll see. At the end. Uh, you can add it here. I don't care. Substitute in? Yes. So u was right here, sine x. Sine cubed x over 3. Plus. That's what you need. Do you feel okay with it? It's going to take a while to master it, right? Yes. Practice, a lot of practice. Uh, but it's possible. You know, you, you guys have the, the fundamentals down. You understand the substitution. That's really all there is to it as far as substitution goes. The substitution part is pretty easy, right? It's making it fit the substitution. That's a little bit harder sometimes. But work with it, especially the trig ones. Get through that stuff. Get over the hump, and then you'll, you'll be okay with it. This is the last example as far as substitution I'm going to give you. Are there any questions before we move on? All right.